Hello dear friends, I am Dr. Garima Sharma, Senior IVF Consultant at Apollo Fertility Thane. So today I'm going to talk about the effect of medications during fertility treatment. Now the various medications that we use during fertility treatment with different kind of protocols are available in the form of oral tablets or capsules, some vaginal tablets, capsules or even gels, transdermal patches or gels that is which you can apply on a skin like uh, as simple as a lotion and at the end the injections. So what is the purpose of these medications? Now different medications obviously will suffice the different purpose. There are some medicines which are there to enhance the egg growth. Now typically we are looking forward to a growth of one to two eggs in an IUI or a natural cycle and multiple eggs for an IVF or an ICSI cycle. Then there are drugs which are there to induce the ovulation. There are certain medications which are there to prevent a premature ovulation and therefore prevent any compromise in your results. There are medications to help in the development of uterus lining so as to have a good lining at the time of embryo transfer. And then there are medications which act as a luteal support before you actually test for pregnancy. So let's look into a few of these drugs. The first and the most commonly used are the oral ovulogens. So you would commonly hear terms like letrozole and clomiphene. These are short duration oral tablets which are given to induce the growth of one or two eggs and that they are typically used for a natural cycle or in an IUI. The second and one of the most important chunks of an IVF treatment is the gonadotropins. Now these are generally available as injections which could be either pure forms that is your recombinant FSH or recombinant LH or it could be a combination like a human menopausal gonadotropin which we commonly call as an HMG. It is a combination of an FSH and LH. These injections can be given into deep buttocks that is IM root or subcutaneous that is in your fat which is typically below the navel or the fat on the anterior aspect of thighs. These injections are generally used in an IVF cycle with a name to form lots and lots of eggs and sometimes they are also given in an IUI cycle. Then we have the medications to prevent a premature ovulation and these are GnRH analogs. So again they are available as injectable forms in the two types. One is an agonist so you would hear terms like luprolide, buzerelin or triptorelin. And then there is antagonist where you will commonly hear term like citrorelix in India. The idea is again to prevent a premature release of the egg before the egg pickup. The next set is the ovulation triggers. Now they are available again as injectables and we have three prototypes. The first one is the recombinant HCG, other good is the urinary HCG and the third is the GnRH agonist. They are based on two principles. One, they facilitate the final maturation of the egg. And secondly, they time the ovulation, so they help us in scheduling the natural cycles, the IUIs and the egg pickup for IVF or ICSI. Then there are medications which are there to develop the uterus lining and they are generally available as oral tablets or vaginal tablets or injectables and even transturbant chips. The luteal phase support drugs are usually a combination of a progesterone with or without estrogen. Again available in different formats, oral tablets, vaginal capsules or gels, transdermal patches and injections. On the top of it you might be also given certain supplements like preconceptional vitamins, certain micronutrients to enhance the egg quality and the sperm quality or certain gels again to improve the egg quality. Now let's look into some of the side effects. There are usually minor side effects related to these medications and they are generally a nausea, a vomiting, abdominal distension, little bit bloating. All of them can be easily managed with simple conservative management or mild intake of medications. Other symptoms could be headache, breast tenderness, mood swings and pain at the injection site. Some of the other concerns or the other side effects of these medications which are largely the concern of the people around is a term called as OHSS which is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. As the name suggests it means that the ovaries are hyperstimulated because of the increased hormones and the ovaries increase in size. 
So typically a female would present with complaints of abdominal distension, discomfort, bloating, nausea, vomiting, difficulty in breathing, difficulty in uh, passing urine. Now the good part is that with the advances in the newer protocols, we have actually been able to establish OHS's free clinic, thereby making an IVF and an XC process extremely safe. The second concern is that of multiple pregnancy, which is obviously bound to happen because you are aiming at more number of eggs, you are looking out for more number of embryos. But do we have a solution for it? Well, yes. So in an IVF or XC cycle, you can limit your chances of multiple pregnancy by opting for simple uh, single embryo transfers. So my dear friends, largely the IVF and all the ART related uh, treatments, the medications used for them, I have been tailored with so much of technical, uh, technological advances that it has made the IVF journey quite patient friendly with very safe protocols and very fantastic results. Thank you. Thank you.